Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you. Peace out to the rest of you. Black or China, black in again. Uh, you know what it is. Hit that share button, please, to benefit everybody else. If you've hit like, share, or subscribe, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, especially for the share button because the message is more important than the message. You saw the title. This message, um, it's about what Red Supreme mentioned a while ago. Red Supreme said a lot of African American men are going to wind up with single mothers. Um, because, and he brought to, he brought pointed to the statistics. What is it? 52% of black men that are childish and don't have kids, childless, no kids, no, uh, and have not been married. It's either 52 or 42%. I think it's 52 because I can remember seeing that in print. That's more than half. The others um, are either married without kids or they're married with children or they're unmarried with children. Now, how many are unmarried with children that they had out of wedlock? Well, they say 25% are unmarried with children. Now, how many of them conceived the babies out of wedlock? I don't know. Maybe there's a stat on it. Maybe there isn't. What I do know is that 25% of them at most can be the stereotypical single dad just, you know, spitting the kids out and leaving them. But what we do know is that at the end of the day, 70% of our babies are born out of wedlock in our community. We know that. Now, if the women already outnumber the men, 70% of the, of, uh, 70% of the women, now that's if 70% of the women are single mothers or having kids out of wedlock. I don't know exactly how many they are, but what we do know is that, I mean, the stats already prove this. And what we can see in our faces already proves this. You've got a bunch of women fucking the same few men. I don't like to say it like that, but that's what it is. A bunch of African-American women want to screw the same minority of African-American men. And that's why many men have a lot. That's why many men have no kids and a few men have a bunch of kids. I know that this is happening. I've already mentioned it before. My subscriber, Dwight Hayes, has already uh, pointed out how um, he was told by doctors a while back that African-Americans are beginning to see a rise in the, inflict in the afflictions that were previously associated with inbreeding and close genetic relationships of the parents. Now, we don't believe in incest. We hate it for the most part. So if we hate it, but we're seeing a rise in this, this means that there are a few of us that are doing the incest knowingly because they're just a few sick people everywhere, but there are many more of us doing it unknowingly. Now, why are they doing it unknowingly? Because these women want the same few men. That's why. So, you know, they, uh, uh, what has happened is that many of our women have decided that only a few men even have the right to have their own kids. But all men have the right to raise and take responsibility for children. Do you see how unfair that is? Red Supreme pointed out how because there are many more black men with no children than there are all black women with no children, many men will be stepfathers even before they become fathers. That is true that there will be those cases, however. What's going to happen is this. Really, a lot of brothers are going to say, if I can get with other women, I'm going to do it. Now, what I'm going to say to that is, brother, if you're going to get with other women, Unfortunately, now I can't stop you. I can't say don't do it. What I can say is don't get with the women that come from communities that don't look at us as equals. That's what I'm going to say. I will say that. Don't do it. Don't get the white woman. Don't get with the Indian woman. Don't get with the, the non-black Arab woman. Just don't do it. You can get with the Afro-Latina if she's proud of it because black families, even Latin America, tend to be at least somewhat divided based on that, how proud they are. Uh, they at least know this is an issue and they're at least confronting this. This does exist. Arabs are not confronting this. They don't even want to talk about the, uh, these racial issues. They call you a troublemaker if you do. Now, if you say, I want to marry the whitest woman in the room, they all understand. But if you say, I want to marry the blackest woman in the room, then they call you a troublemaker. That's how it is with Arabs. Don't mess with them. Unless you're talking about black Arabs like the Sudanese. And generally speaking, they are proud to be uh, black. They don't have a problem with it in most cases. Um, you, 
can give it a shot in Southeast Asia. That's okay. That's fine. Go ahead. And a few parts, maybe, they may have something against brothers, but for the most part, not only do they not have something against brothers, but also their families don't disown them. That's the other thing. So, go ahead. But stay away from... You need to know which communities, which ethnicities around the world have had anti-black sentiments and leave them the F alone. Just don't even give them the time of day. That's, the, that's what I would say to do. But if you do that, then you know what you have. Then at that point, you've got ways that you can avoid you being stuck with the option of being a stepfather or being with nobody at all. Because, brothers, I'm going to tell you, I can sit up here and say, look, well, make sure you have your own kids before you try to get with these women. But one, I'm not allowed to tell you to fornicate. Secondly, I can't, even if I told you to do it, that doesn't mean you can just go out there and pick someone and then have babies with them. That's not the way that works. So, um, what I'm going to say is that, yeah, you know, brothers, see, what Red Supreme said is the reason that you have to get passports. And to get passports, you're going to have to make sure you live your life in such a way that you don't do anything that would jeopardize it. Don't have no babies. Don't fall behind on child support. Don't um, don't get any felonies if you can help it. Now, in order to help you with that one, because you can be a black man, be innocent, get a felony, what you got to do is don't hang around people that get felonies. Don't go nowhere with them. If you are related to them and you hang out with them, hang out with them either at their house or at yours or someplace where they ain't going to do the stuff. Other than that, you just got to avoid it. You got to avoid people to get felonies to avoid being uh, uh, given a felony later on. Just don't do it. Just consider this system as a trap that was made just for you. And then when you get older, you get a skill. You stack, stack up some bread as much as you can. You get a passport. You travel, take a few vacations. Learn about different areas. Then you pick a place to which you like to spend more time. Stack more bread and then go there permanently if you can. Plot your course. You got to start it now. Because at this point, what's going on is that some of the guys you know that are getting all the draws, they're also going to have all the babies. Somebody's going to hit them with a child support case. They're going to fall behind. They ain't going to be able to get passports. You will wind up with more options than they do later on. Because Red Supreme is right about one thing. If you don't want to be a stepfather before you a father, you ain't got many options with black women. You ain't got a whole lot of white women. Because white women know what level they're at. And when they're at them top levels, even if they like your blood, they ain't going to get with you necessarily. I mean, you ain't going to get that trust fund, attractive white woman to settle down with you and share that wealth with you. The reason is because if she wants to, her family will write her out the will. That's just not going to happen. There's a society that are built on making sure that your black behind does not get the same money they do and the same resources. It's built on that, and they're not going to change that. And if one of them is going to deviate in such a way that would allow that, they're going to cut them off. They're going to be cut off. The same thing has happened some, uh, with the Muslim community in the United States and Canada. A lot of them were like, well, you know, now that Islam is popular, we're going to go ahead and start trying to preach it more uh, to, you know, the Americans and the Canadians. What they meant was the white Americans and the white Canadians. They couldn't wait for them to accept Islam. They didn't understand that that was not going to make Islam the same as Christianity in these countries. It was not going to happen like that. How do they know? What happened? Well, there were some white folks that came in and accepted Islam. Now, they were still vastly outnumbered by black folks and Latin Americans that accepted it. But when they came in, their people disowned them. Usually, they weren't that rich to begin with. And when they came in, whatever they were going to get now was taken away from them. If they had an inheritance, they were written out the will. Islamically, they can't inherit from a non-Muslim anyway. But, it, but that wasn't the issue at this point. They weren't going to have to tell the parents, please write the will uh, differently and put me out. No, the parents were just like, oh, you're Muslim. Okay, you're out of the will. That's it. You're not getting anything. Because we'll be darned, we'll be damned if we're going to uh, pass away and all our money goes to you so that you can go and fund some terrorists. That's how they are. And even if they knew that it wasn't about no terrorism and that was just some stereotype, they still were just like, we're not going to have you funding a massage and have them singing that stuff in the morning early, waking people up for prayer. We ain't going to have none of that. This is Canada. This is America. 
what it really came down to was that they were not going to fund something that inherently could not allow white supremacy, even if its adherents or its claimants were blinded by it. That's the truth of the matter. That's what it came down to. So if you think that you're going to simply jump ship because of this and just go white, that's not, that ain't the way that works. Same with just going Arab or just, uh, you know, going Indian or Pakistani. And that's not going to happen. Bangladesh is a different story. Why? Well, because the Bengalis uh, don't have the arrogance. But see, because they don't have that arrogance, Indians and Pakistanis, especially Pakistanis, tend to look down on them too. That's why. So you got to know who has what kind of relationship with black folks. And that's another thing I'm going to tell you. You might sit up and say, yeah, well, I'm FBA, I'm ADOS. Brother, when you step out of the states, you need to understand this right off the bat. If somebody has a problem with Africans in general, not because of a specific cultural reason, but if they have a problem with Africans in general, you don't want that person either. You being American is not going to make you different in their eyes for very long. You're black. If they got a problem with Africans in general, eventually some Africans are going to come to you mistaking you for one of them. And, uh... They're going to have issues with you then. Now, they got a problem specifically with Nigerians because they because of what was done to them. You could say to them, yeah, well, the thing is that Nigeria is a bunch of different regions and a bunch of different cultures in one country. So you have to understand that, unfortunately, the majority of them come from one city. And that's who you're meeting. But it's really not like that. But the point I'm making is that you, you have to be very, very careful and you have to spend time with people of other cultures just really to learn how people of other cultures perceive each other so you can avoid the same mistakes. But if you're going to go that course, you got to start plotting it when you're young, like 13. You got to know this. So, brothers, when you're hearing this, you need to go and tell these young brothers if you want to escape this nigga matrix that white folks and certain uh, unknowing or very willing sisters have cooperated to help them with, you're going to have to start plotting that course now at a young age. Let them know. Tell them. Because things changed. Make them understand that. Young brothers, tell these, I mean, uh, brothers, those of you who are listening, tell these young cats this. Now, my video is not made for children according to the COPA laws. But you know which ones in your relatives and your family are mature enough to handle this. You're aware of that. And so you can tell the ones who you know are mature enough to handle it. They got to plot this course now. They may not know what career they want, but they need to know that they need to get a career that will allow them to go elsewhere now. So that they can do something um, and earn some money elsewhere later on stack that bread and avoid debt that's what because in all honesty the way things are going now um, everything is built for one thing and that is to make sure that the most intelligent black man gets stuck that's what it comes down to stuck in the system because even if daughters of the trade whether it's real or not the fact remains that what happened in Daughters of the Trade seems to be happening now, wherein they will put pressure, and, and many times they will put pressure to make sure that their kids are provided for, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but the way that Master's going to do it is always going to be in such a way that she gets what she wants, but brothers can't do what they need to do to get out the system. I'm out, and I'm going to do what I can to stay out. I hope that this has been a benefit, Blackheart. Sign a blackout. Assalamu alaikum.